This is Trinity Sunday, and uh, as uh, Tana Victoria said in her earlier sermon, this is the one time in the church's year that we dedicate a Sunday to a doctrine. Usually it's dedicated to something about the life of Jesus or the acts of God in the, sa- in the, salva- in the history of salvation. But I want to start with a story that I picked up. And this is partially from the scripture, and I just want you to listen for a minute. Jesus asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And his disciples answered and said, Some say you are John the Baptist returned from the dead. Others say Elias, or others of the old prophets. And Jesus answered and said to Peter, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said, You are the Logos, existing in the Father as his rationality, and then by an act of his will being generated in consideration of the various functions by which God is related to his creation, but only on the fact that Scripture speaks of a Father and a Son and a Holy Spirit, each member of the Trinity being co-equal with every other member and each acting inseparably with and interpenetrating each, every other member with only an economic subordination within God, but causing no division, which would make the substance no longer simple. (laughs) And Jesus answering said, What? (laughs) Uh, I took this, uh, this I I don't know where that came from, but I got it from a uh, priest in uh, Woodstock, New York, uh, G.G. Connor. And every single thing in that, though we can laugh about it, is actually a true statement of our theology. But the problem is, of course, it's a statement of theology about a question nobody's asking. And it's a statement of theology about which few of us have much background to even engage in listening to the answer. It's kind of like the kid who asks his father... Uh, Dad, where did I come from? And Dad launches into you know some personal thoughts. Oh my gosh, I knew this was going to come. What am I going to do? You know, God, please help me. So he starts telling him all about the birds and the bees and how he and his mom met and everything else and this. And pretty soon he gets there and he says, "Now, Ted, you know, how is that?" He says, "Oh, great, Dad. My friend Eddie said he came from Oklahoma, and I wondered where I came from." <laughs> So sometimes we have this great ability to answer the question that nobody is asking. And then we wonder why they aren't just thanking us for the opportunity. I I have a question. My my question is, are we as, as a people really desperate to know about the inner workings of the life of God, Father, Son, to Holy Spirit? I don't think that's the question I'm running into out on the street. Most of the time, I find people are far more concerned about things like, why am I unhappy? Why am I lonely? Is there any place I really belong? Who's really watching out for me? Those are the kind of questions that I think people are really asking, and I don't think even the most unique and detailed explanation of the Trinity is the starting place for engaging with people who are experiencing significant questioning about their place in not just in God's kingdom, but in their own community, whether they even feel like they even have a friend in the world. But there is a part of our understanding of God's nature that does apply to this because it connects us with what God's purpose is for us and for the world is. Yes.